report. Five deaths in just nine days and tonight reports of one more. London's cycling community has started a revolt. Boris Johnson's under pressure to improve road safety. Lord Adonis has called for an independent review of cycling safety. Is London's cycle network safe? I and mean, how do the numbers of accidents and injuries this year actually compare? Zoe Conway returned to London's first ever cycle route on the A4. <laughs> well, I declare this cycling thread open. This is the Transport Minister in 1934, opening Britain's first bike path alongside the A40 in London. To Mr Oliver Dietrich, on a 50-year-old penny farthing, fell the honour of the inaugural ride. Of course, you'll struggle to find cycle lanes that wide anywhere in Britain now. 80 years on and the A40 is now the busiest route out of northwest London. There's still a bike path, but it's on the pavement behind me. The debate sparked by the deaths of so many cyclists in such a short space of time shows that we're still wrestling with how to safely accommodate cyclists. On Wednesday, 1,000 cyclists held a vigil and protest at a roundabout in East London. Three cyclists have been killed here in the past two years. Redesigning the junction is a priority for campaigners. But for many, our cycling problems go way beyond the design of individual locations. I think the problem is that we still think that motoring is the only way of getting round. And the reality is that in London, for example, car ownership is falling. Cycling is increasing. So we can continue to design for more cycles, which is a more efficient use of the road space and for public transport, rather than trying to pack as many cars as we can into roads like these. So just how safe are Britain's bike riders? Well, measured in terms of deaths per 100 million kilometres travelled, we're less safe than the Netherlands, Denmark and Germany. But we are safer than America. Despite the recent deaths, Transport for London says the city's roads have got safer because the number being killed has gone down, whilst the number of cyclists has increased dramatically. What worries campaigners is that the cycling demographic is extremely narrow. We still find that the people who are taking up cycling are disproportionately male, they're disproportionately affluent and they tend to be people who are relatively healthy, non-disabled, relatively able to cope with the way the roads are in this country. The people who aren't taking up cycling so much tend to be older people, children, disabled people, women and people from ethnic minority groups. People whose surveys show are more likely to value being away from motor traffic and feel more intimidated by the current road situation. When the bike path first opened, cycling groups were furious about it. As far as they were concerned, the motoring minority was being allowed to drive all other traffic off the road. The bike path experience is a grim one for many cyclists. They feel that they're not just fighting for road space, but also for their reputation. London Mayor Boris Johnson said this week that some cyclists are taking rash decisions and endangering their lives, though he specifically didn't lay blame with any of the recent victims. Cyclists should approach the first stop line via the cycle lane. And... Advanced green signals for cyclists is one way Transport for London are trying to make it easier to keep cyclists apart from cars. Other vehicles will get a separate green light to proceed onto the roundabout. But critics say these reforms won't necessarily work. They say nothing less than remodelling the roads will protect cyclists. You can see changes in some of the better designs that Transport for London is proposing at the moment. For example, something called a bus stop bypass, which means that cyclists don't have to overtake buses and move into streams of general traffic, which often has heavy goods vehicles and so on in it. A bus stop bypass means that cyclists can go inside the bus and so they don't have to mix with all that motor traffic. And this is the kind of facility that's totally commonplace in the Netherlands. If you're feeling run down, you should try Norwich one Sunday and take a ride in one of these old crocs. 54 ancient flivers to shake up your livers and penny farthings to startle the cops. There may be many good reasons to get on your bike, even if startling the cops isn't one of them. But even cycling's biggest supporters can see why many are deterred. 
Zoe Conway with that report. Well, joining us now, Mark Ames, editor of I Bite London, the safety campaigner, and Jonathan Cole, co-owner of the cycle shop Vela Rouge. And, and gentlemen, thanks uh, to you both for coming in this evening. I, I wonder if, Mark, you can, you can explain what you think has happened, this terrible spate of accidents in the last week or so. We've had a critical density of, of incidents over the past week or so, but actually they're not that unusual. Nearly all of the cycling fatality, fatalities in London involve particularly large vehicles and particularly dangerous junctions. This is a known thing, but unfortunately we don't seem to be doing anything about it. So, for example, that Bow Junction, which mm. has seen three cyclists killed in two years, it, it, are things changing there now or not? No. Uh, Bow Junction is part of Cycle Super Highway 2. As you say, three people have died on that roundabout. Five people have died on that route altogether in two years. So there's obviously a problem with the actual design of the road uh, and encouraging people to ride on some of London's busiest roads without actually creating safe space for cycling there, I think is actually irresponsible by Transport for London. Right. And they need to act. I, and do you think, because we've had a sort of spate of politicians coming in with thoughts, is a cycling summit the answer is is what Boris Johnson's now saying the right thing or do you, I mean do you want do you want to get the cyclists right away from the cars or, or do you think there is a place for them of course there's a place for sharing the road and, and all road users in London should look out for each other but on the very busiest roads with the most heavy traffic we don't need to reinvent the wheel we just need to look across to the North Sea to, to the Netherlands to Denmark and learn from the best they've been doing it successfully for years they have children they have old people riding you know it's all very very safe and Jonathan the density that Mark was talking about I guess is visible when you're selling stuff right I mean do you see a we see a very big shift into what we call sit up and beg bikes where you can look around you're not moving as fast and you have more awareness i think i think the mayor's office is doing a fantastic job on the infrastructure in london but it's never going to happen overnight uh you know one death is 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 too many just to explain the sit up and beg bike y yeah. you say makes recycling safer because your head isn't down you're not you're not down you're not powering on there's not so much adrenaline and is that what you body. recommend people buy in london uh, do you actually step into the conversation we absolutely i mean we 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 we, we really specialize in these boutique bike builders from around europe that make you know 500 to 2000 bikes a year out of love um and that they, they, they like the bikes on the walls around here i mean the the the, the uh, video you were showing mm. of the, the 1930s Pashley, which is a great english brand they make bikes which um, you know, they just launched a new bike that looks like a bike from the 1930s and people love it and they're buying them uh, in, 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 you know, pretty good quantities from us. And when people come in and they are buying, you know, the racing bike, the fast mm -hmm. bike, something that's lighter, does that worry you? Do you actually redirect them or...? I think there's two types of cyclists. You have the guys who are in the sportives, they go out on the weekends, they go out with their, their, their friends and they do long rides. Then they're the people who are doing the commute to work. And there's a, uh, you know, riding a bike around London is fantastic. Uh, you know, if you're in the centre of London, you can go through the parks, you can go down the canals, you, you know, you can go from one part of London to another without even seeing any traffic because of the quiet routes. Um, the, the problem comes, as uh, you know, as Mark rightly says, is you know you get onto a, a, a big main road with a with an HGV vehicle beside you and a bus. It's scary. <laughs> you know, there's no doubt about it, and, and that I, has to be a separation. Are you ever going to? I mean, you're not going to keep HGVs out of the middle of London. Uh, can you can you see it? What I propose? Why not? If you look at Paris, you know, the, our, our near neighbours, they have many more cyclists in their city centre than we have here in London. Uh, and yet in 2012 they had no cyclists killed and that's because they have what's called a lorry control scheme. They make sure that heavy goods vehicles can't access the city centre at peak times, you know, when children are cycling to school. Mm. Uh, here in the UK, in London, we have a nighttime ban, which means that all the lorries come roaring out of their goods yards kind of just in time for the morning rush hour. It's madness. It's something that if you wanted to, the mayor could change tonight. But do you think the tipping point has not yet come. We're not at a stage yet. Yes, car ownership may have gone down, but we're not at a stage yet where more people are naturally choosing to cycle. 
Well, I think in London perhaps we have, you know. Uh, there are so many journeys uh, on bicycles in central London now that if we were all to give up riding tomorrow, uh, London's cyclists would fill 300 tube trains, over 6,000 double-decker buses, mm. and if we all drove a car, we'd form a tailback 2,500 kilometres long. You know, bicycles are a treat for the city of London. So it's what about you're saying time is we, we should beg you to keep going. Yeah, it's about time the city treated us. Thank you both very much indeed. Thanks for coming in. It's a week since the Philippines was hit by 